You're lucky you're small so you can get in. <laughs> I had to. I got help out there. The firefighters union. Uh, 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 not that bad. Yes, yeah, bit maybe a bit higher. Yeah. But get closer. Yeah. Hey Dom. Hey. Oh, yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Stephen. Stephen from Triple Dead. Oh, cool. How's it going? I'm from Green Left Weekly. Awesome. I do miss a couple. The FSU people are here, I think. FSU guys. Yep, somewhere in the crowd. And we also have the NTEU. I did see the guys over here from the NTEU. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. This has exceeded all of our expectations. 
Congratulations to each and every one of you for being here tonight, for standing up for public service jobs. That's what we're here for. We do love the public. We love public services. They're essential to this state. What I'm going to talk about is just a little bit of the history that's gone on to get us to the point we're at today. The first thing this government, government did within days of taking power was to announce what they called the Establishment Management Plan. Because what that was, was a freeze on all positions in the public service, except for the so-called frontline jobs. So, what that has resulted in, as you all know, is that thousands and of thousands of temporary workers have now lost their jobs. Those temporary workers, many of whom have been in the public service for years and years and should have been permanent, did get no notice in many circumstances of what the fact that they were going to lose their jobs. But shame is right. They expected that their jobs would continue because that's what they were told in their workplaces. Campbell Newman's come in and said, no, we're not having any of that. We don't need you anymore. Out. These are real people. Many of you will know those friends and colleagues who used to work beside me and they're not there anymore. Lord knows how they're paying the bills, how they're feeding their kids, how they're paying for the education of their children, how they're paying their mortgages. Campbell Newman needs to know these are real people. The next thing that happened was the so-called Costello Commission of Audit. It's not based on good economics, it's just a spin document. Yes. However, they had to do that, didn't they? So that they had some way to justify the cuts that they're making. That's all the Commission of Audit is for, is to justify the cuts they're going to make to public services in Queensland. As well as that, the next thing that happened, we've got enterprise bargaining happening for the largest enterprise bargaining agreement in the public service, the one we call the Core Agreement. It covers over 50,000 public servants. Now, in our current agreement, we actually have some employment security clauses in that agreement. It gives public servants some protection for their jobs. This government wants to strip that out. I'm sure some of you here today voted for the LNP, and I'm sure that you're wishing that you hadn't. However, that's another story. The other, the final nail in the coffin, or final two nails, were the announcement of the Public Sector Renewal Board. Renewal? Is that renewal? No. It's again about a body that's going to go through each department and work out where and when to cut jobs. It's another way to cut those jobs. And finally, they then decided to change the directives. The directives are things that govern various policies in the public service. And they changed the directive to make it easier for them to stack permanent public servants. Is that acceptable? We're all here 
encourage you not to tell Kate on you, and that's totally unacceptable. Shame! Campbell Newman promised public servants had nothing to fear from him. He also promised there would be no redundancies for no forced redundancies for permanent public servants. Is it time for Campbell Newman to honour those commitments that he made to the Queensland people? All of us here tonight are calling on him to honour those commitments that he made during the election. relies on the services that all of you and your colleagues deliver for Queensland people. Many, many of you do jobs that aren't obvious to the man and the woman on the street, but those jobs are still essential and deliver quality services. Promises. Do what you promised to do. Change this. The only way we're going to change this is what we've got tonight. People power. So finally, I'm going to symbolically light my candles. Everyone hold them up so we can remember the workers who have lost their jobs. That's one thing. But we're also lighting a flame of a fight against this judgment for job security for public servants. Thank you. The workers united will never be defeated. 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 We've got a lot of few speakers tonight to really get through to ram home this message to Campbell Newman and his parliamentary caucus. But what are you going to do? Is Jenny Thomas, the general, uh, the assistant secretary of the Services Union? So please welcome Jenny to the podium. to see you all here. The Services Union is coming out to rally for the members of Together in the Public Service because we are your other half. We are the workers who work in local governments. We are the workers who work in the government-owned corporations, in Queensland Rail, in Energex, in Ergon, and in your social and community services. We are your other half. We are the other half of the public service that is also under the pressure of losing their jobs at the moment. We have over 5,000 workers right now who've been told their services are no longer needed 
or they are to shut their doors because they will not continue to get funding in our community sector. Now, I can tell you how those people are feeling at the moment. 3,000 of them are born from Queensland Rail and QRN who've already been hit hard enough in the past couple of years with the sale of assets. So we have those people all faced with this uncertainty in the next coming weeks to months. And then what we have at the same time is a new state government consistently saying that there's no more funding for this. Shut your doors. It's time to close. And again, these are services we provide, the men and women providing, that, as Vivian said, is sometimes unseen. But I tell you, they are the fabric of our communities. You will see these services in crisis. You will see these services being delivered in natural disasters, when the energy exploiters come and fix up the network, when the rail system breaks down. These are the people making sure you get to work, you are safe in your homes, and you have services being provided to people who are disadvantaged in your community. These people's jobs are affected along with the public service right now. So we need to make some noise for these people to say, we're dignified, respectful work to your communities. Uh, again, this can be unseen at times, but this is a good demonstration of the work you do, and that's the connection we need to make with our communities to say what they will miss out on if our services continue to decline or they close the doors of these services. We need to make sure that we're making the noise loud and clear to our governments to say, enough's enough. We're not going to take this in terms of declining services. <laughs> And that's enough. And then I think we need to also put into the minds of the people who we serve and make our message very clear about what this is going to mean for Queenslanders if we continue to see this decline. And I tell you what it's going to mean. It's going to mean more inefficient rail systems, insecure networks in our electricity systems, closing the doors, as I say, of our social and community services that provide services for disadvantaged, our homeless, women in refuge, women in crisis, our children. We do not want to let these services close. We want good systems for good working Queenslanders all here uh, to deliver a future for our kids, for the public service and for our communities. So that's what we need to rally for tonight and we need to ensure that we're taking our message on the streets and we do this collectively as a group of union members saying that we provide decent services to our communities and therefore we need to maintain those services and we need a government that will support this. Uh, and we need to fight to increase our government funding to make sure that we have viable services to ensure those services can get to those people in our communities who need them the most. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny Thomas. Comrades, our next part of the proceedings is we have a video of some of the hard-working people, or our hardest-working people across government, facing some of the, the most challenging working lives that anybody can have, and that is our ambulance drivers and ambulance services. Uh, every day they face challenges, danger, and they deserve our support. So we'd like to show this video to you. Guys, those from down there, look, um, unfortunately, you're probably not going to see it, but I'm sure that we can have links to the websites and we can try to get those. So later, later on, you can have a look at this video. It's very powerful. So, roll the tape. Hi, I'm Roy Brother. I'm a delegate for the United Voice Union. I work as a paramedic in the Queensland Ambulance Service. We're campaigning right now for a new collective agreement. We can't even get the government to sit down, to start negotiations or give us an offer. We know they have told us there will be cuts to our budgets. We'll be asking you for your support in coming months. We need you to stand with us as we will fight 
for this World Craft Annual Service. So today, we're proud to be standing with you in defence of Queensland Public Service to protect the jobs of thousands of hard-working Queenslanders. Everyone in the ambulance service, frontline and support staff work together to protect and save lives. Whether you're a frontline paramedic like myself, an emergency medical dispatcher, or if you're an administrative worker in the regional office, helping to keep frontline services running. Our ambulance service is highly respected in the community because of the hard work and dedication of people of every part of the QAS. We will be campaigning with you to make sure job cuts don't compromise frontline services. Together, with a united voice, we can achieve anything. Shame, Campbell Newman, shame. fantastic members and look that highlights that our United Voice members that work in paramedics, the support staff that delivers those services uh, are far, you know, far wide throughout the state and they are such vital to delivering safe outcomes for our community members. Yep. Let's fight it guys. Okay. And then next message comes from a statement from Owen Dugan, the Queensland State Secretary of the Rail, Bus and Tram Union. This is the statement that um, Owen asks us to read out to you today in support of you members here. Owen says, I regret that both I and the Rail, Tram and Bus Union State President are, not on, uh, are on union business, not on, but are on union business in central Queensland today and are unable to physically be present at today's rally. But we are certainly with you in spirit. Whilst public servants, particularly members in Together, are currently at the full front of the attacks on job security, in recent days hundreds of our members in the RTBU administration division employed by Queensland Rail have been advised that they are now in the firing line. This commenced with a freeze on filling of all the vacancies within Queensland Rail and was followed by an announcement that the government is seeking rail to provide details on how they can cut costs by up to 30%. 30%? Such cuts, could, such cuts could, they can cut, sorry, such cuts could only occur through significant cuts in jobs. At this stage, our admin division members are now in the front line, along with Together and many other public sector union members. We therefore commit to working in solidarity with other public sector unions to fight for workers' job security. The RTBU, the RTBU extends this, this support. The Workers United will never be defeated. Owen Durgan, Queensland State Secretary, Rail, Tram and Bus Union. Thank you, Owen. Our next speaker is one of our fantastic Together delegates that has spent many years working hard to fight for her members in her agency and it's been a hell of a battle because it's been in communities and child safety. And Those members that provide 
provide support and outcomes for the most vulnerable of our society, continue to go in there day in and day out and continue to get a kick in the guts by this government in not understanding what they actually do. So I... Their clients aren't from the big end of town. Some of them are, but most of them are work, uh, uh, need the assistance to make their work, their life better. So they later on are working people like you and have the advantages that we all hope to leave as a legacy for, for Queenslanders. I call on Joe O'Shaughnessy. <laughs> serve the public. That's what we do. And in communities, we look after families and children. We look after society's most vulnerable. Of all the resources that we have in Queensland, our children are the greatest resource that we have. Everything that we put into them is what we put into our future. We come to a critical point in industrial relations history in Queensland. There is no longer consultation. There is no longer discussion. There is information that is incorrect and misleading. In my department alone, there have been thousands of people that have gone. But as a union delegate, I am unable to get that information because the consultation processes are incredibly poor and are just there to shut people down. There is no such thing as permanency, not only for public servants, but we need to know that the private sector will also be affected by changing industrial laws. It is time that we take a stand. It is time that we make our voices heard amongst all the other people in this state. We have a right to say what we need. We have a right to fair work. We have a right to fair work practices. We have a right to consultation. If the government does not consult with its own people and does not think about their needs, what is that government doing? So, for us, we'll start the fight. We'll do it peacefully, we'll do it nice, but we'll do it loud and we'll do it strong. And we'll do it for as long as we need to, together. Thank you, members. Our next speaker is Paul O'Driscoll. Paul O'Driscoll is a long-term, hard-working delegate for the Queen, for the Together, and has been working for SciTech for many years, working hard for his members to achieve fair outcomes in the workplace. I introduce you, Paul O'Driscoll. Hello. That's right. I'm a workplace delegate at SciTech, and. Um, SciTech had the dubious honour of being named in Mr Costello's report. For no particular reason, he decided that we should be looked at to be sold or privatised. <laughs> That's right, shame, Mr Costello. What would this interloping, overpaid, interfering Mexican know about what we do? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So I'll tell you a bit about it. We're there, we provide ICT and network services for many agencies across government. One of those is for transport and main roads. On that runs, oh yes, on that runs the driver's licensing system and licensing systems and the rego system. They bring in over three billion dollars worth of revenue to the government every year. We also store the data in secure data centres. It's your data. And if we're privatised or sold off, it'll be sold to the highest bidder, or God forbid, sent offshore somewhere. North Korea. 
And what about the people, the people, my co-workers at SciTech? Who are they? Well, I'll tell you a little story about them. During the floods, when the CBD shut down, when there was no public transport, there was a small group of them that ran the place remotely. Some of them were cut off, some of them had no power, but they were able to do it. And even when their laptops lost their battery power, they went around, they drove around, they found a shop or they found a service station, they begged the people and said, can we recharge it and kept it going online. And through that whole time they kept going. And what was some of the stuff they kept going? The communications network for the police and for, and for their emergency services too. So for our fire <laughs> What do these people want for at the moment? What do they want? Do they want a medal? No, they just want their jobs. So, Mr. Costello, at SciTech, we build and we maintain ICT services that underpin the delivery of services every day to the people of Queensland. Thank you. Wow, this is just amazing. I wish that you all could stand up here and have a look at yourselves because you're great. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> My name's Tristan Douglas. I'm the campaign manager for the Togethers working for Queenslanders campaign. And what I'm here to tell you is that we have a fight on our hands. Are you ready for it? <laughs> The most important thing that we have on our side through our fights is our stories, and the stories of hard-working public servants who make a difference in the community. So if you turn to the screen, I'd like to show you a couple of those stories now. I came from, sadly, an area of New South Wales that had low employment and not a heck of a lot of the future for me. My mum and my dad were both very sweet hippies. They lived in an old shack with a, a dirt floor that went on safe me. Coming to Queensland, there was just this warmth. It was warmth for people and warmth of community around you. Wilbur actually was my family. I've got literally the best job in the world. I don't care if you think you do, I know that. <laughs> I was brought up together in the environment and they're only empowered to. I'm so lucky. But what we're caring for is so important. The most important thing in the world around the office is that we still have people who care for the environment, not just people who process the documents that care for the environment. Uh, turning my lovely husband, I'm really blessed. He wakes me each morning with a coffee. I don't have to ask. He's my touchstone. In this home, I'm part of a family with my, my beautiful husband. And outside of that, part of the community and a part of Queensland, it's, it's the bigger family. Hopefully, we're all here together looking after each other. And that, for me, is really important part of being on this planet, I think. basically been around violence. I think what I do now is far more violent than what I was doing in the military. And I found a job as a youth worker in a youth detention centre uh, here in Townsville. My job entails looking after up to 46 kids, um, not at one time, frankly. We deal with, I would say, the 10% of the hardest crimes and the real hardcore kids, but, but our kids, some of the older residents that have come and gone, we're actually very thankful for what we've done in here. I'm a member of the Herb Society here in New Queensland. It's a calming influence for me. It's, a, it's, it's an experiment, it's, it's learning new things. I would never, ever contest that I know everything about herbs. The ladies that I go to the Herb Society with, they are, they are masters, you know, I bow to them. There's nothing better than being on a motorbike in a process of rebuilding uh, a bike at the moment. 
I guess that's my expression. And it's a, it's a real sense of freedom. It's good to come home because it, it grounds me. Uh, my daughter's a very positive young person. She's seen some of the heartache that I come home with. And it's good to have a, a child that will show care and love to you. Queensland people are very open, loving and hard-working people. And you know, I have to say it's that way because that's the way Queensland is. It is a lovely place. And I couldn't see myself living anywhere else but... tell you a little bit more about what I do because uh, you know just to the public I say I manage a specialist unit for child safety but look a bit more detail will help a bit. Um, I actually manage a unit or did until this morning I'll get more into that um, and it's about children who are abused and removed from their families and they come into care and unfortunately some of those children are re-abused. When that situation is very very complicated they call my unit. My unit provides advice, does reviews and undertakes investigations about children who are re-abused in care. This morning my branch was told it was uh, cut by 25%. And unfortunately that wipes my face, uh, sorry, wipes my unit off the face of the earth. Um, And I must admit, I'm in, in shock and disbelief because I had to tell my crew that they're going to be made redundant and they're subject to the whole process. So I'm standing up here a little bit nervous and, and very, very angry. Um, thank you. Now, yeah, what's amazing is the only inquiry, inquiry in child protection. My unit came about from the last inquiry. So, just a recommendation, look up Appendix D, you clowns, that's where we are. And, and while I'm angry, I'll tell you what's not going to, I'm not going to be able to sleep, and it's about the cases and the kids that we can't get to. Shame. 
And look, I just want to say thank you so much for all your support because we are in for a hell of a fight and we're one of the first casualties. Hey, good luck to you all. Thanks, Jeremy. Hi, I'm Angie. Um, I'm with Parks, basically, and over the years, you would have called Parks and Cans. You probably heard from me for at least 13 to 16 years, and then after that, I've been working directly in the tourism section of our department. So, basically... One of the strongest industries for Queensland tourism. Very important. Um, we're here tonight and, as you saw, I love my job. I'm one of the people that absolutely gets up every day and just bounces out of bed, ecstatic to go to work and work with the people I work with. And some of you are here tonight. I don't know about you guys, but one thing I do know is my job matters and all of your jobs matter. There is no single face here that I can look at tonight and say it's not important that you are going to work every day and providing a community service. It's about job cuts. It's the impact on Queensland's economy, on our community, on our own families now, this attack. It's not okay. It's the dollars spent by our members and us as employees and public servants to spend in Queensland businesses. We keep the economy alive and we keep the Queensland businesses alive. You only have to drive home and have a look around, especially in some of the smaller communities, and notice how many closed signs are going up. You only have to go home and go to a barbecue and you'll hear of somebody's business that sadly is closed because there's no money going in there anymore. These businesses have shut in the last quarter and it's due to the loss of wages spent in those industries. I go home every night to a, to a private contractor. He's my husband. You saw him make me coffee. God bless him. <laughs> and him and other contractors like him are at risk now because we can't buy products from them. So what I say to you tonight is support Queensland as working for Queensland and save local businesses as well. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, I love me herbs. It's so awesome, people like me. <laughs> uh, we had a uh, rally up in uh, North Queensland just the other day, and uh, 300 people turned up. But I'm standing up here at the moment, cracking my pants because I'm, <laughs> I'm seeing people that are just massive. Um, <laughs> Um, Townsville, like all regional places, is feeling to hurt at the moment. It's a real tragedy to see. Um, yeah, so you don't know where you're sort of going with it. Uh, with my work, uh, I haven't lost anyone. Uh, I went back up there after completing a course down here together and uh, petitioned uh, my boss uh, to any temporary jobs we've had, uh, we need to make them permanent. <laughs> Uh, it was only a small wind that we managed to get uh, effectively three people put onto the permanent lens from the temporary lens. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, the one thing I really see with all the people here today is passion. Uh, there's a lot of anger, there's a lot of frustration, but it's passion. Passion will keep us pushing through this. We will win. He's not going to win. There's no way known he can win. Uh, with people power, it's always going to come out on top. Thanks very much, Michael. Uh, Thanks, Angie, Stewie and Jamie. And, and, and ja uh, Stewie left off saying that we're going to win and that's what we're going to do. Look around here. Look at all of you. There's a precedent for Liberal governments getting in with big majorities, becoming arrogant and overreaching and harming the community. Go! Does anyone remember work choices? Does anyone remember what the response was to work choices? Now, for those of you who were around in those days, you knew that as a union movement, our job was to not to unite and get the message out through the community. And that's what we need to do. So many of you have been handed bags 
um, here tonight that have kits and flyers and leaflets. Um, we couldn't get them for all of you because we didn't know that 15,000 people were going to turn up. <laughs> What we need you to do is take that message home. So what I'm saying to you today, go home, take those flyers, leave with your street, talk to your neighbours, go to the Working for Queenslanders website and sign up to the campaign. Because only by working together, neighbourhood by neighbourhood, house by house, conversation by conversation, can we put the pressure on these guys with an arrogant majority to change their minds and change their policies? And if they don't, we have the safety net of the Queensland people doing the right things in three years' time. Who's committed to this fight? Thank you, members. Our last speaker tonight is the Secretary of Together, Alex Scott. Congratulations for a fantastic turnout tonight. We apologise that we haven't got enough material for everybody. We printed 4,500 bags worth of material and we ran out of quarter past five. So I think that's an indication of the number of people here tonight. We've had an honour the last hundred days from an arrogant government. An arrogant government that want to talk about you being public servants, about you being bureaucrats, about you being fat cats who work in George Street. But this government's got to understand, we're Queenslanders first, we're part of the community, we deliver the service to the community, and taking on the public sector and destroying our services and destroying our jobs is taking on Queensland. Because Queensland has always supported a quality public service and always understood the importance of local jobs and local services. Over the last couple of days, we've been treated to the LNP conference, seeing a whole lot of lies to the whole by a whole lot of LNP politicians. But there's one person I think we should listen to, and that was James McGuire, and he was their campaign manager. And he said they won this election three years ago, the day that Anna Boy announced the privatisation of rail, because the Queensland government, the Queensland community, never forgave a government that lied, and never forgave a government that turned on its election promises. So we, we have a long fight in front of us. We've got a fight to defend our jobs. We've got a fight to defend our communities. We've got a fight to defend our services. But we can and we will win in three years' time. But that's too far away. We need to fight now and we win, need to win now. We had a Premier who sacked 3,000 people on Black Friday but couldn't tell the media how many he sacked. He couldn't name one person sacked, he couldn't name one place where they worked and he couldn't provide one example of the services they provided. This is a government that doesn't care. But this is a government that doesn't understand. You can't take 3,000 jobs out of the Queensland public sector from Cairns, from Townsville, from Brisbane, from Mackay and not affect services. So while we will have to fight for the next three years to try and defend our jobs and our services, we've got a lot of fight on our hands as well. Because this government doesn't care or doesn't understand what they're doing to you as people and what they're doing to your workmates. It, it's, it's an issue to start cutting jobs. It's an issue to start cutting funding. But the process is being used by this government in terms of changing the head office in departments like communities are reprehensible. They are destroying lives. I want us all to commit today to being part of the Working Together campaign because we can fight for our services. But we need to do more. We're not asking for you tonight is to make a commitment because the collective bargaining agreement for the core public service is up for renegotiation at the moment. And the government has passed a series of pieces of legislation to try and make it harder for your voice to be heard. 
what we can do and what we're urging workers to do from tonight onwards will bring this government to our needs not only through our community campaigning but through our industrial campaigning. government thinks it can silence the teachers and the nurses and the other professionals through the legislation about protecting action ballots. And we're going to protect them and take them to the We're going to protect them. We want to fail them protect their action ballots this month. We want every workplace in every public sector, in every community in Queensland, the workers to come together and demand the right to be able to take strike action in order. We have a thousand workplaces in August taking action, demanding a voice, demanding the right to protect their jobs, their services and their community. This government, despite its majority, cannot ignore that, we will not ignore that and we will win. Thank you. housekeeping things have happened. Because we've had such a great, great crowd, which is just unbelievable, the police are going to create a safe passage for us to move away up George Street. So thank you to the Queensland Police Service. Now a couple of things, we might finish off with one more chant just before we go and when you look at things you, you look at um, you know, any Seinfeld fan see the pesky little neighbour on there called Newman you know that conniving sneaky creepy little insignificant little dribbling well guess what we've got a neighbour here at the moment that is conniving and snivelling and short and hiding behind things and whatever. And his name is Newman also. Surprise, surprise. So maybe we need to send a clear message to him, directly to him. So I thought, hey Newman, listen up. Public servants won't give up. Well, how about this? We've got a lot of other union members here. Let's just make it. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. You right? Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Union, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. Hey, Newman, listen up. Union members won't be stopped. 